Hello. Today the topic under discussion is the Omicron variant of the Covid virus. Now I'm going to warn any Greeks ahead of time that when I pronounce letters in the Greek alphabet I shall be mispronouncing the letters in the English fashion. So this is a trigger warning to any Greeks who might be watching this channel. Tough luck! We English have been mispronouncing Greek for the past thousand years and I see absolutely no reason to change such a noble tradition now. So back to Covid, which some call the China virus, but of course I don't do that. Whatever its name, apparently it's a much milder form of the original and according to the people who first identified it in South Africa, it amounts in most cases to not much more than a heavy cold. Also, it seems that it must have been circulating in various countries around the world for several weeks because samples have been found all over the place. But wait, as they say in the adverts, there's more. Because this isn't only a more infectious but milder version of the dreaded Covid plague, but it is also educational. How about that? And I'm not just talking about the science, I'm also talking about the liberal arts because, well, let's face it, how many of us two years ago would have been able to recite the Greek alphabet in sequence? You see, every cloud has a silver lining, hasn't it? CNN has an interesting take on this. The naming of the new coronavirus variant, Omicron, is causing some confusion. Since May, the World Health Organization has been using letters of the Greek alphabet in order to name the co coronavirus variants. Delta was the most dominant one, followed by eight others, including Epsilon, Iota and Lambda, and that so far have mostly fizzled out. So, after a new variant with the unwieldy scientific name of B11529 was discovered last week in South Africa, observers might, well, you see, discovered is wrong, they mean identified, don't they? Um, uh, uh, discovered last week in South Africa, observers might have expected who to name it after the next Greek letter on the list, Nu. Well, to my horror, it turns out that the education freely available in the form of governmental bulletins almost every day seem not to have penetrated the less than astute skulls of the CNN scriptwriters because they say that the new comes next after the lambda, which it doesn't. The next after the lambda which any schoolboy could tell them, provided they could find a boy who has actually been to school, of course, in the past two years. The next after Lambda should have been Moo. But I suppose Moo doesn't even get a mention from them because, well, all we're always setting aside the possibility that they're a bunch of ignoramuses, my guess is that they skip moo because they probably thought that people might think moo was mad cow disease. Although I also have to point out that the word moo in Chinese translates into the English as admired, which isn't something that you want to associate with a virus. And there's another Greek letter that fits the same sort of profile, but I'll get to that in a minute or so. So after the moo that they didn't use, the next one should have been nu, which CNN suggested might have been passed over because it sounds too much like the English word new, that's in English, or even more confusingly as nu, in North American pronunciation, uh, leading some people to say they've had the new variant, which sounds sort of trendy and not half as frightening as the World Health Organization would like us to feel about this virus. So on to the next, but that, oh dear, oh dear, 
that poses even more of a problem because the next is Xi, which is exactly like the name of a certain president of China. And that puts it far too close for comfort and perhaps even a little bit more frightening than even the World Health Organization would like. So they went straight on to Omicron, which does sound suitably high tech and avoids any inconvenient coincidences with the Chinese language. However, we still have problems because since this virus seems to have virtually unlimited capacity to reinvent itself, there'll be more interesting times ahead, folks. Well, after Omicron comes Pi, which sounds delicious. Of course, they may wish to ditch that one on the grounds that people might be queuing up to get it. And then we're rapidly running out of letters, aren't we? By the time we've learnt the whole alphabet, uh, alphabet, by the way, derives from the Greek in the first place, you know, alpha, beta, never mind. What will they choose next? When they run out of Greek letters, what would they do? Well, they could go on to Hebrew, I suppose, which is what mathematicians do. But I have a much better idea. After Omega, which they might not do on the grounds that it sounds too much like a watch. We should turn our attention not to Hebrew, but to Viking runes. I think that's ideal because that's just the right alphabet for a society afraid of plagues, afraid of paralysed economies and second class citizens. Viking runes are just right for a society going back to the Middle Ages. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.